So has the recording started? Yes. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I thought we were still waiting. Uh, anyhow, sorry. Thanks a lot. Welcome, everyone. This is a Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today, we're on the 6th of June 2023, and we have Mark Waite, um, Damien Duportal, and Kenneth Salerno. Hello, everyone, and thanks for coming. We have the usual open action items, uh, but one of them is somehow progressing. We'll see that later on. We have the ongoing, the what has been done, and an open question in the end. So first of all, for the open action item, we have the usual uh, Docker images. We should let people know when our images get uh, outdated and so on. Um, so most of the time, it doesn't uh, progress but Mark, uh, you created or participated in a major update regarding uh, depreciation. We talked about that in the previous meeting, and the first effects should be seen from this week or something like that. Uh, already, already have been seen, and the first bug report has already been received about a mistake ooh. I made. So, so <laughs> yes, and the first fix is merged, and the first fix will arrive in today's release of Jenkins 2.409. So that's super cool, but uh, it's not yet about um, the Blue Ocean container image. Correct. It, it's but not. You uh, set up a framework and foundation work, name it, uh, that will allow us whenever the time comes to say, hey, it's deprecated. Uh, or am I wrong or am I right about that? Uh, You're correct. Yeah. It's it, We need more work in order to do in order to deprecate containers independent of the operating system on which they are running. So, so the container image can be deprecated even though the operating system is still fully supported. These blue ocean containers, for example, are actually running Debian and, and we continue to support Debian, but we don't want to support that container. So what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of some extra stuff into those container images that will let the detector say, oh, you're running a deprecated container image switch. Cool. Good to know. Thank you, Mark. So uh, what about the first uh, bug that you already corrected? Uh, I guess it was not major. No, it was just that it mistakenly, the, the, the warning mistakenly appeared telling you that Fedora 38 end of life has happened. And I think oh. Kenneth actually is running Fedora 37, so he didn't detect it. I didn't detect it, but a user did and said, look, Fedora 38 is very much still alive. Oops. Please correct <laughs> yeah. your message. And, and it was only an off by one error. I don't know what anybody complained about. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Uh, last time I looked at communityjenkins.io, I didn't see any people complaining about what are you saying my operating system is out of date or something uh i don't know if this has happened since yesterday no well no it was so last week's weekly release included it and yeah. the only people who would see that warning is if they were updating weekly and we like yeah. it when they update weekly but the reality is many people don't and so yes, if you're if running weekly running... but you don't update weekly then you're 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 at risk but we can't fix that. And we can hope that people that use old uh, operating system don't update <laughs> weekly the weekly. <laughs> so, right. and, and actually, I don't think I would, I'm trying to think if I would catch it in my build environment. Uh, oh, no, I did. I did switch to the door, so I should have. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're um, on, I, if I remember, you're on 37, aren't you? Not 38. I do. I pulled down the latest. Oh, um, base okay. image. So I, so I, it would be thirty-eight for me. Good. I well, I so then build it when that was out there. Then, well, then you may you may see that message in if you consume four hundred seven and the next release four hundred nine will fix it. I see. So I have to check my build log now. You have me curious. Yeah. Your, yeah. your build your build cannot succeed because there is no Jenkins war for the 2408, there is only a git tag. So your build must fail or you must check your build because that means you are downloading an unexpected war <laughs> that's come from I don't know where. <laughs> Be careful on that one. Yeah, so just, yeah, just check that 
if you see it, if you, the other is you would only see it if you look at the user interface, right? You have to look at the top level page. It doesn't contaminate any build logs. It doesn't, it just appears at the top as a, a little warning indicator. Back to you, Bruno. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Uh, next was the ongoing work. I started, I think, two weeks ago, work on Alpine Images with Damien. Uh, the first, which was it? Docker SSH agent? Can't remember. Or oh, Docker agent. It worked. But then I stumbled on an issue related to regex, of course, for update CLI. So for the time being, it's stuck, waiting for some help. Uh, yes, without regex, timestamps, and char set, uh, we would be out of work. <laughs> yes. Anyhow, uh, what else? Yes, send to us seven early end of life. So, Mark, your pull request is merge pass of 2407. Uh, so, you got some uh, warning from users because there was something about Fedora, but send to us seven, no news from anybody for the time being. Uh, the blog post is now yeah visible. Thanks a lot for sharing that. And I guess if we had a look at the um, logs for the Jenkins IO website, we'll see a peak <laughs> from now on regarding this uh, very much uh, this article, hopefully. And as a rem we have to remember that this will appear in the LTS in August. Yeah, that's it, at the end of August and not before. Uh, Mark, aren't we supposed to go to... Oh, no, we don't know yet. Sorry, so it would be 2.413.x. We, we don't know. know. Yeah. We don't know yeah. what version of, of it, right? This is... Early. <laughs> this is... There, there's an X there, right? Yeah, almost there. Uh, yep, so it's still the right candidate, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, next thing, uh, we have to replace CentOS 7 usage in our Jenkins controller containers. That was something, Damien, you proposed in the last meeting. Uh, so I may have misunderstood what you were <laughs> looking for, but nonetheless, I made a draft PR um that i wanted to be an open discussion with the community except that it was not clear at all uh in the description of the pr so i have something that works but it's very much a draft of course there are lots of things which are hard coded like um the checksums for example so it does work but it needs a lot of work and I'd like, if possible, that the community chimes in and says that's a good idea, that's a bad idea, maybe we should do something else, we'll see. Damien, you had quite a lot of um, pros for doing so, but also maybe a few cons. Um, no comments. The, that pull request demonstrate that we can keep the multi-stage build with the G-Link using the direct installer from Demarin. The initial idea was to consider that solution as a fallback if we see issues with the Alma and UB selection. In the case, in the eventual case of we don't, we cannot use a parent image that would have the same, uh, that would have, that wouldn't have a compliant GDK installed within. The, the probability of this was low, but not sure we had to check so that was a proposal if we are stuck on one of the edge cases we could directly download the official tamarine uh, zip unzip it and build the g-link so that the proposed official that should be compliant will be g-linked and adapted to the, our image what you did demonstrate that it works very well it requires a bit of code uh, that might require the checksum with the update CLI or Renovabot or Dependabot if we want to keep it updated. But outside this, that worked very well. Another reason was because uh, sometimes, not all the time, when there is a, May, uh, a significant GDK update at Temerin, the installer is available way sooner than the Docker images. Most of the time, the default Ubuntu image with the Timurin within is available immediately for Intel. But then the rest, it depends. Sometimes the RM are there quickly, sometimes not. Sometimes same for PPC or CentOS, UB, RHL, etc. So 
if we have the installer, the installer is the first step when they publish a new release, especially in the case of security releases of the GDK. That would have been a reason, a compelling reason to switch from our easy multi-stage from the official parent image to a multi-stage like you implemented. Uh, given the status and there is no clear consensus on the effort on that part, we first need to update the base Alpine, base operating systems. The proposal I'm making here, I'm chiming in, is to say, let's consider that an experiment, close it for now, mm -hmm. and have in mind as a community that we have that solution working in case we are stuck, and then focus on let's continue tracking and automatically updating all dependencies, and then consider the solution when we will track all operating systems. I like Got that. It. Yeah, uh, you told me the other day that uh, it would be problematic to depend on the existing Tamarin Docker images in case of a CVE, uh, because it could take up to three weeks before we get the corrected image. So that yeah. makes sense uh, in that case. Um, but also, I don't know the status of update CLI for uh, these images. So is it already working or are we depending on Dependabat? Dependabat? For the GDK, Dependabot is it's not easy with Dependabot. Most of the time, Dependabot try to latest of latest, so we have to shut it down most of the time. Uh, and also, Dependabot is not able to update Docker bake files. It doesn't yeah, okay. know the syntax doesn't provide any, so it's only so it's already... org. Okay, sorry. Right. Uh, so it's already working with update CLI somehow, right? For some, and for some, we might have. Depend about when we use a from Eclipse Tamarin uh -huh. with the GDK version written directly on the from instruction, not from a build org, uh, because okay. depend about doesn't support Docker file build org mm -hmm. as well. It's only from instruction. So there was uh, a lot of work ahead of making that kind of change. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, being sure that we track the GDK version on all the images is a good first step. Hmm. That's getting the, kind of the checksum, like yeah, no problem. Je getting the As... checksum is quite easy. Uh, we do that on the infrastructure, and we already experimented. It's a bit of scripting on update CLI, but technically there is no problem on this one. Okay, update as soon as I get uh, better with the um, no problem. update CLI regex, <laughs> uh, update... I try my luck with that. <laughs> yeah, that, that you you can work with both on parallel if you are stuck on the regex and don't get help or are frustrated with that because I can have. I, I, I can be quickly frustrated by regex as well. Um, but in that case, the checksum part is get the latest whatever version of Timurin. We do that on the Jenkins infrastructure. And then you can have a, a dependency that say from the retrieve version, then I don't know, do whatever request, grep regex somewhere yeah. and extract the checksum. So update CLI would open a pull request saying, okay, I'm changing the version here and the checksum here. The security process will be the person in charge of reviewing and appro approving this, would have to validate the checksum manually outside before approving as maintainer to be sure, okay, update clear hasn't been corrupted by a malicious process. Got it. That if sounds pretty exciting. The, if, if you send me the string you're trying to match, Bruno, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of experience with regex. I can help you. Cool. They are the Golang uh, version, I guess. It's not that I don't like regex. I do love regex. I use regularly Emacs with regex with some kind of success. But <laughs> even online uh, Golang regex, uh, you know, tester, tell me my regex work. <laughs> That's why I'm. <laughs> it, yes, uh, Kenneth, I will send you something uh, to chew on. Thanks a lot. My bet is it's a problem in the user experience with update CLI, which is far <laughs> from perfect on that area. Uh huh. The interface between my brain and the keyboard, which happened to be mine. Maybe. Uh, also. I don't think so. I don't think uh, so. Anyhow, or maybe I can't read the logs. But anyway, that's not the subject. Uh, <laughs> thanks. That's much clearer to me now. And there are other operating system end of life, which yeah, will happen that, that this year. Actually, I think we can just delete from the notes. That's... Yeah, thank you, Mark. It was from last meeting. I copied paste. 
bad boy. Uh, then, um, frankly, I read the pull request to, you know, your proposal to switch Alma Linux from eight to nine. Uh, I saw that you closed it um, after putting a hold on or something. I read the whole discussion and to be totally honest, I didn't get everything. Uh, there were lots of uh, inputs and I don't know if you could make a summary of what happened in this pull request mark. It's, I was overwhelmed by the amount of information and I don't know uh, Alma Linux. So Yeah, so it, it fits exactly with the question Kenneth asked last time. Why Alma Linux instead of UBI? And so that question was asked and Oliver Gonja, who maintains the UBI container images, said, yeah, you're right. However, there are limitations in UBI that are not there in the in the Alma Linux container in terms of which packages you can use. So what Oliver suggested was, hey, when people ask for an upgrade, we should point them towards the UBI containers and see if that works for them. If it does, done, because it's one less container to maintain. Um, no reason to upgrade Alma Linux 8 to Alma Linux 9, because we've already got a UBI 9 that they can use. And so if they need mm -hmm. the, 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 the Red Hat 9 level of, of operating system, of, of uh, utilities, et cetera, they can just use UBI 9. Yeah, and I think there was a confusion from one of the users that um, you needed a subscription to, to install any packages, which is only true if you needed to extend beyond what UBI comes with in, in its repository, right? And, and I use UBI all the time and find that it has the packages I need. So I'm not quite, they need to detail what, what are these packages they need that's outside of that. And maybe that's even in the Apple uh, extended repository anyway. Right. So well, I thought Oliver's, Oliver's suggestion was, I think, well taken. And, and it, it already, the UBI 9 container delivers command line Git, for instance, and Git large file support. So, so okay. obviously it's not that you're blocked from installing any package because we install those as packages. So, exactly. so it's, it's a valid thing to say, if you need, if you need Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 utilities, et cetera, use UBI 9. And we've got right. a container and, you know, already with it. I mean, full disclosure, I mean, I do work for IBM, so I'm going to be a little biased, but and I've been a uh, Red Hat customer for almost 25 years, maybe longer. But um, so I have a lot of a lot of experience with Red Hat in general. But um, I, I find that all of these derivatives that are building, rebuilding the source, they, there is a lag here, right? You know, it's, sure. it's not going to be quite as up to date. Maybe maybe that lag has decreased recently and it's gotten better. But I think there's just less and less of a, since UBI has even existed, there's just less and less of a reason to be using these derivatives. I just don't see why. Great. Thank you. That, so that, that covered, did that cover this, give you the summary that you wanted to hear, Bruno? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Much better when you are telling me the truth, except of me, uh, instead of me reading the whole thread and not getting much of it. Yeah. Thank you. It's much now. Uh, next subject, what has been done? A few updates on the Docker images, nothing major this time, no breaking change. Uh, let me know, Damien, if I'm wrong of that. So SSH agent 5.3.0, just a few uh, dependency, um, nothing major. Docker agent, same for that, a few dependencies or chores, nothing more. No update on Docker inbound agent. Uh, did I miss anything, Damien? Um, so no, that's okay. Docker inbound agent should have an update CLI uh, request today because the release of the parent was done yesterday. So another example why having two. I guess there there has been multiple updates CLI updates. So that might be failing. Uh, we need to check why, but we should be able to use the Docker agent parent soon. Um, why minor updates? I didn't spend too much time on the agent this week because with my infrastructure side, we migrated the controller, the private controller in charge of uh, pushing uh, images to the Docker Hub from AWS to Azure with a brand new machine. 
So I didn't try too much update, but still this one to validate end-to-end -end that the new controller is able successfully to pick a tag, build it and push it as we expect. That was a under the hood change, but that's why yeah, the change log here are, are tiny. Yeah, no problem. You did a major update, upgrade, move, whatever this week. So of course, uh, nothing was expected on this side. Thanks a lot for the work you did, by the way. Uh, now, Damien, there's another other subject for you. Uh, we've been talking about Docker Hub stats for weeks or months now, and you have created a shared uh, spreadsheet with lots of information. Could you tell us a few things about it? Yes. So these are the stats directly from the Docker Hub. Um, for each month, so I only went back in time until uh, beginning of this year. We can go back in time on previous year if needed. So I don't know how much we have access. Um, I'm not sure who else have access. Uh, I'm admin on the organization with due to my infrastructure uh, uh, hat. Uh, we might have the possibility to open that access for other person because if me uh, being is a boost factor, that's not really healthy. Right now, I've added to my monthly billing reporting of the infrastructure, the task of also reporting the download stats here. That's short term. Um, on the content, for each month, you have two, two chats. One, which is re, um, a summary per repository, so per image, and one which is details with per tag and per checksum. Uh, you can see the amount of pull by tag, by digest, there is, a, there is also the unique IP separation that pulled the image during the, the time period. I don't know what is what version check is though. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it someone on, only downloading the manifest and not the layers? Mm. That might be, but I don't know. The answer, that's the answer. Um, yeah, that's almost all. Uh, some things that we, after a quick review we saw, we still have a lot of downloads of image that shouldn't be used anymore, okay. such as GNLP-slave or slave. Uh, so yes, the work that Mark is doing uh, with the depreciation, yeah, I think uh, once it will be done with the operating system, we should think about how to be sure that these images uh, generate a big red message on Jenkins console that say, hmm, I see you are using an unmaintained image with a, which is a full hull of CVs and stuff. Something really scary, right? Yeah, but there is no magic, I guess. We will have to supply a new image. You, you can't hack it. Uh, oh, no, 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 it? no, no. In this case, it's much better. We've already supplied the new image. They're just not using it. Yes, but the, so these, the problem, oh, these the two, this. these two, we we supplied the new images long ago, and they should have switched long ago, right? Because yep. these two are really this one, right? They're these these right here. So so it's the, the at least for those two, the legacy yep. there is people just aren't paying attention to their system. It works, and that's good enough for them. Yep. Yeah. So, so interesting sorry. to track these these numbers after you will have the operating system depreciation because this image shouldn't be updated. If they are, we have another problem which is on our side, but if they aren't on that hypothesis, uh, they will use old operating system version. So that, uh, at the moment in time, the old Alpine CentOS Debian version will be mentioned as out of date. So in any case, that will have an impact. Okay, so sorry, I, I wasn't clear enough. Uh, my question was, will we have to rebuild those kind of images so people get a big red warning or no. will your system, the system you implemented more, detect them and show the, the information? The idea, the idea that's still, still evolving is that the controller should somehow see that it was asked to launch a container image that's label is Jenkins colon JNLP dash slave. And it should say in some place, you're using an outdated, you're using a container image that we know you're not supposed to be using. Okay. That, that was the concept in my mind. Okay. We'll have to discuss this. Uh, I don't think that's the place. That okay. might be a lot of case that uh, will be missed, but still useful. Mm -hmm. um, right. I fear we, you will have to implement that on 
each of the plugins that have some other concept of container, Kubernetes plugin, Docker plugin, yet another Docker plugin. Thus, more discussion needed. Absolutely, okay. no question, more discussion needed. But yeah, the idea, uh, you're, you're correct, Bruno. The idea is that we should avoid having to build a new version of these images. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, that's all for the statistics. Uh, now, eventually, the detailed statistics can help us about the operating system, but uh, that need to we need to create dashboards or spreadsheet with yeah. formulas to extract all the variations because we have the SHA here. So how do you tell if someone won the Alma Linux but used the SHA? The SHA does not contain the information, so. There is a work to associate the, the SHA of a tag. So that we need another database or source of information in order to really have the join between information. Yeah. That's yeah. raw data only. Okay. I uh, don't want to name names, but John Mark loves to do that kind of spreadsheet, uh, graphics, and so on. Um, you never know. It could help with that. Uh, the last question I have about that is that a manual shore? Or is it automated in some way? No, I don't know how we could automate it right now because that will require um, highly privileged credential, even if we restrict mm -hmm. to this one. So that may mean a token that we need to rotate with 2FA enabled. Okay. <laughs> Same for uh, adding, I mean, it's, it's a matter of credential. So yeah, and the time for automation and tests clearly doesn't uh doesn't uh, uh is it's not worth it compared to five minutes per month to updating it yeah. the important part for the community do is ensuring that i there isn't only one person we access to the raw data i at yeah. least the second person active in the community should have this permission that's really important and healthy so what are the other use cases for this data besides trying to figure out if people are using uh, images we don't want them to anything else useful sure we can... well deciding i see one right here there's this project called evergreen that was a long ago project that we we switched off there's another one called jenkins file runner and these are both indicators that they are really switched off right the very small numbers there are good measures for us ah okay we have we do not have many active users who are running those things that were switched off so that kind of that kind of data helps me a bunch in deciding should we document anything about evergreen other than its non-existence no that okay. kind of okay is there a I time mean, 21, when we will sorry go ahead 21 you, i was just thinking 21 unique ips is not zero it's not five but you know Correct. It could potentially be it could potentially be one farm of servers, but well, and it, it for me it's the the ratio between this number, right. one hundred fourteen thousand unique IPs, and twenty one. Given that ratio, or or even the agents ratio, which is let's see, where's the the inbound agent? Inbound agent is here. It's towards the top. Yeah, 98,000. So 100,000 to 21, three orders of magnitude is more than good enough to, to say that we've succeeded in not having that running widely. Uh, my stupid question was, will we ever switch off for real? I mean, deleting from Docker Hub any of these images uh, to get people to react? <laughs> I, I don't think no. there's any motivation for us. Is there in, in general, Damien, I've not seen other projects do deletion of containers if if you choose to run a container, all right, you're accepting the problem with that. I'm not sure why. I don't see any benefit to us to delete a container. Um, I know that Docker has an integrity garbage collector, which delete images that hasn't been pulled since years. So the mm. image is automatically deleted. Um, the thing is, I'm not sure for the low level image, what is the real threshold? Is it an absolute zero pull at all? Or if there are a few pools here that are an internal Docker bot that check that could be something or the update version. I don't know the detail, 
but I'll show some of my personal images that are really old since the first years of Docker Hub that disappeared. So the process is already working since at least 2020. That's why they added the API rate limit as well. Um, so some of our images might disappear at a moment in time. Mm. That's a good question. Uh, my personal opinion is yes, we should remove these images, mm. but that could be a problem to send to the product manager at Docker because that's a problem they could help us. Is it possible to have still have a page on the Docker Hub while the image is removed from their registry? That would help saying, okay, we keep an image, a valid URL on the Docker Hub. It's not indexed by the research, so you cannot search for that image anymore. But if someone has an old link pointing to that image or know how to directly reach the page, then we could say, oh, uh, that slave image has been deprecated since five, six years, and so now you have to go there. I think it's worth asking Docker product management. They might have already tools for that. And that question spans to the official Jenkins image, which already have a deprecated thing. I'm not sure what's the status. I'm almost sure you cannot find it by searching it now, but I might be wrong. So it could be interesting to see directly because these are specific action, one-time action to be taken by Docker. Thank you, Demi. Uh, and I'm afraid this is all we had. Uh, we're already late because uh, we started late because of me. So I guess uh, this one will keep it for next time. Thanks a lot for your time, folks. Th thanks a lot for your help. Thanks a lot for coming. We do appreciate it. The video should be available on YouTube from 24 to 48 hours from now. Have a good rest of your day.